Welcome to Watching Watch 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 Chatting with you. Hey everybody, welcome to Chatting with You. It's our first episode of the year. Um, Happy New Year to those that are listening. And this year, one of our goals is to kind of do something different with our podcast and not only just be goofy and come up with ideas on the spot, but actually have a plan and give you guys a topic that's actually relevant to your daily lives. And with that in mind, we have our first guest of the year, which are the chiropractors from Reach, who are our friends, our neighbors, and friendly fellow Brazilians here. (laughs) So why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves? I'm Dr. Lorena Jesus, and this is my sister. Yes, Dr. Juliana. So full disclosure, they are my chiropractors. So, <laughs> um, But the main reason today, we're not here to necessarily just talk about so much their practice, but more how talk about self-care and how chiropractic comes into play. I think one of the main things that people want to do throughout the years, you know, lose weight, feel mm-hmm. better, do this and that. But a lot of times they forget that it, it goes along with other aspects of your life and how you can actually perform at a mm-hmm. better level. And I, I, as long as, I mean, as long as I can remember, I think a lot of people always had their, you know, perception of how chiropractic mm-hmm. works or they think mm-hmm. it's, I've heard a lot of witchcraft conversation mm-hmm. and things <laughs> like that. And to be perfectly honest, I've over the years learned to value it to the point that I, I think I told this to you guys yeah. that if I wasn't a lawyer, I would probably want to be a chiropractor because I think it's yeah. super interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, know if that. I'll be good at that. Really good cool. at that. You told me. We'll see. Yeah, I'm because she, we usually, you know, yeah. I, you, you kind of don't want to work with yeah. us. Yeah, yeah she's I'm his favorite. So she's usually the <laughs> one on the floor. Yes. So, um, but I, I think chiropractic is super interesting, and I think I don't care what other people think. I've experienced mm-hmm. it in my daily life that it works because Mm -hmm. I used to get migraines like at least two times a week. And after I started, you know, getting regular chiropractic care, that doesn't happen anymore. So that's not witchcraft. That's just (laughs) facts and data that it actually works. I can't remember when was the last time that I actually had an actual migraine. You still get a headache every now and then Mm -hmm. with a migraine like I used to. I can't remember. It's been years. That's awesome. So it's, I am a good example that it actually works. So what I really wanted to start off with you guys is kind of, you know, tell us a little bit about the importance of self-care and how chiropractic falls into that. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's it's funny that you say that because I think a lot of people just don't know how what chiropractic is, the science behind it, and I don't think that they um, know enough, and that's why they, most people do think that it's witchcraft or it's just voodoo. Mm-hmm. Um, so our goal and one of our missions is to really educate the public. Mm -hmm. So we do try to, you know, go to schools or go to different places to make sure that people know why it works and how the body functions so that they just don't think that it's, you know, a placebo effect or Mm -hmm. something Mm -hmm. like that. But um, do you want to share a little bit about how chiropractic (coughs) and impacts like stress and stuff? Yeah, Um, I think that's really a good topic. Self-care, especially at the beginning of the year, everyone's ready for a change. And it, it does go hand in hand because we are trying to eat healthier and exercise. But if there's something going on with your nervous system, then you're going to hit a wall right? Everything, it works together. It's not just one part or one area. So with chiropractic, the focus is improving the function of your nervous system. So brain, spinal cord, and the nerves that come out of it. So through multiple different stressors, whether it's physical stress, whether it's through toxins, things that we eat, or just emotional stress, there will be vertebras that will slip out of alignment and it'll stay out of alignment. The issue with that is not just the pain, because if it hurts, you're like, oh, it hurts. I got to go see what's going on. It goes beyond that because it'll send your brain into a stress response. So it comes from inside the root causes your brain thinking there's a stressor in the body. And what the brain brain is designed to do is, is it's either going to be in fight or flight or rest and digest. Mm -hmm. Fight or flight is, is there a brain, is there a bear that walked in the room? The brain needs to to figure out, out, yeah, am I going to run from the bear or am I going to kill the bear? Right. (laughs) So obviously we cannot have the body operating in that stress mode all the time Mm -hmm. because it'll lead to fatigue. If the body is operating in that state, most of the time, it'll release cortisol. Then we know that cortisol will start to affect sleep 
right? We can't rest. Mm -hmm. It'll start to affect digestion, uh, reproductive organs, reproductive system, because if there's a bear in here, is the body worried about sleep, about reproducing, about digesting food? Mm -hmm. No, it's tensing up. It's thinking, I need to run from the bear. I got to survive. Most people don't know that over 80% of the population today are living on fight or flight mode Mm -hmm. without a bear. You're in your room and you're trying to fall asleep at night. You know there's no bear, but because your spine is out of alignment, it's sending that stress response. So the brain is causing the body to operate in fight or flight. So what so we you're also do dealing with yeah anxiety depression exactly so that's why a lot of people of at that. night they stay up and they they're in an anxious state and they don't mm-hmm. know why well you, there's no movement in your spine and your your yeah. body is thinking that you need to you're in survival mode you are in survival mode all the time and it's not it doesn't need to be there it can't be there Mm -hmm. so everyone's heard of adrenal fatigue that's what it is it's fight or flight all the time so where we come in is um, neurologically based chiropractic it's different our technique is a little bit different so for those people who are afraid of cracking and twisting there are other techniques out there that there's no need for it anymore Mm -hmm. there are gentle techniques that will um, that will eliminate the cracking and the popping, mm-hmm. right? So what we do is okay. Now we know there is a misalignment. The brain is thinking it's fight or flight. We need to fix it. What a chiropractor does is we'll analyze, figure out which vertebra is causing that stimulation, that stimulus, put it back into proper alignment, and help your body relax again and come back into rest and digest. There are so many people out in the community who don't even know that there's fight or flight, but there's also rest and digest. Mm -hmm. People don't even know that. And that's where the body needs to be to properly function. That's where quality of life comes in. Mm -hmm. So I know that was a long answer, but I I I needed to. Yeah, (laughs) we're done. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's um, it is a way of life, Mm -hmm. which I find interesting that you said that you experienced migraines Mm -hmm. throughout. I didn't find, I didn't find out about chiropractic until, you know, I was in college and my high school years, I had daily headaches every single day. Mm -hmm. So when you grow up like that, you just think, you know, well, it's normal. Mm -hmm. It probably everyone has it. I honestly did not know that there were people out there who didn't have daily headaches. I honestly thought mm-hmm. it was a, a thing. Everybody so had a, everybody had, had them. It. Yeah, because I didn't know well, better. It's so common. You think it's normal. Like, yeah, it you is. You think back pain's normal. You think that, you know. Yeah, and common and normal. Having Tylenol on your bag yeah. is normal. Yeah. But it's just common. It's not normal. We were never designed to have to. We're not deficient in Tylenol or Advil. Mm-hmm. So you shouldn't have to keep it in your bag because you're in pain. Yeah, but in order to survive. Because yeah. it becomes like you know, a third leg or something. Absolutely. And that's how I found out that my spine, that I was losing curvature in my neck, that it was all out of whack because I started under care. And I remember I used to have, you know, in high school, I'd have Advil or painkillers in my book bag, in my locker, in the car, everywhere. Mm -hmm. You'd have a tiny little bottle because, you know, they sell you the pocket, the pocket size, pocket size one. So I had it everywhere. And when I realized, okay, this, this goes beyond that. It's not just like she said, a deficiency in a Mm painkiller. My body was just breaking down and couldn't adapt. And that's really when I started under care. And that was over 10 years ago and I'm still under care. Now I'll still get a headache here and there if I don't, if I don't sleep, if I haven't had water, things like that, but I don't need a painkiller to function on a daily basis. You know, I know when I get a headache, I'm like, okay, something's off. I need to get adjusted. Mm-hmm. I got adjusted two days well, ago. I think, um, as a time. society, I think we've learned to um, ignore the symptoms, ignore mm-hmm. the signs when our body is trying to tell us that it's breaking down or that you need to slow down or that you need to rest. Usually if you're in pain, like for example, migraines, that means something's wrong. That's literally your brain telling you, hey, something's going on in your body, something it needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Except that now, because we are such a go, go, go society, um, we just kind of like ignore it. And until we are completely like 
in bed broken. for days. We're broken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we have to restore that. So now I think we really need to start teaching our children, teaching people to listen to our bodies when it's yelling, when mm-hmm. it's telling mm-hmm. you something and to look to see what's causing that issue, not just suppressing it. Um, and something now that we're seeing a lot more of is where back in the day, only adults had back pain. Now we're seeing kids coming in with mm-hmm. back pain. Kids are coming in with headaches daily. Yeah. We had a 13 year old that was coming in that had headaches for an entire year. Yeah, she had um, to be pulled out of school. Mom had to quit work because her migraines were debilitating. A 13 year old. Wow. Yeah. But now when we look at our habits, most of us are looking down on you know, our computers, we work desk jobs, and we're mm-hmm. on our phones all day. So now when the curve of our necks were supposed to be a nice 60 degree curve, um, you know, like a nice C curve, now it's going forward. So now I'm sure you guys have heard of text neck. Mm-hmm. It's like a thing now, text neck, mm-hmm. text neck syndrome. Um, and now science has shown that a straight neck, so that means that you've lost the curve, so it's no longer a C curve, it's more of a straight neck. Um, that has been correlated with increased depression, increased mm-hmm. anxiety, decreased mm-hmm. immune system function. So then now we also look at, you know, the children and all these yeah. shootings, what's going on all around the U.S. And then you see that there is a correlation with, you know, their spine, how they're behaving and w- and then the drugs they're taking to cope with what they're struggling with. Mm-hmm. And then not only is it affecting them and their classmates and family, it's starting to affect a community, right? And that's really what our what mm-hmm. our mission is, is that it's not just um, when we think self-care, we're thinking adults because mm-hmm. we're out in the workplace. Uh, but it's happening. We need to start teaching our kids early on just like how dentists did a couple years ago on the importance of well, a couple decades ago. <laughs> yeah, more like a generation. But how they went out and they explained the importance of dental hygiene, bloss, mm-hmm. uh, you know, flossing, brushing your teeth. We need to teach our kids the same thing as far as self-care and spinal hygiene. Because like my sister said, um, they're not they might be, you know, five and six or eight. They don't have cell phones. Right. But they use their parents' cell phones. They have iPads. And they're like this, reading and writing. Yes. Uh, All day. (laughs) Drain your battery. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But at the end of the day, they're still doing the same amount of homework. But now they don't have recess anymore. They're not out at the jungle gym. And they're not climbing and stretching out these muscles again to work counter all the, you know, all the hours that they're like this and that they're Mm -hmm. hunched over. Everything is out of proportion. There's no muscle. There's no muscle stretching and lengthening and then there's no motion in the spine so when we're thinking self-care we need to think okay yes for us who are out in the workforce but now we need to start introducing that concept and teaching our kids how important it is teaching them that it's okay to have quiet time in your room for five minutes Mm -hmm. right i'm a huge advocate of time out not only because you get (laughs) you get quiet time (laughs) for me (laughs) but it's you know it's a way of you teaching your kids hey it's okay it's important for you to have a couple of minutes with just you and you for you to process what you're feeling what you're thinking and then even if it is chiropractic care uh, getting them adjusted it's very different uh, the adjustment on a newborn or on a five-year-old than on a 40-year-old it's not Mm -hmm. the same you know and we're trained there are chiropractors out there who have special certifications for pregnancy right for Mm -hmm. a nice labor and delivery for mom but for infants um, babies who you know now there's an increase I don't know if you guys have noticed on babies with helmets because they're not Mm -hmm. moving their heads and now that I say it, you're going to see it all over the place because you're going to be aware to it. Mm. But they don't have motion in their necks because pediatricians aren't teaching parents about these things, right? If baby's not turning their head side to side, it's because their spine is out of alignment. They don't have motion. Mm. And these are all little things that will make such a huge difference mm. because a helmet is $3,000. <laughs> so, you know, it's not just a self-care, right? Yes. Yeah. So 
Talking about helmet, because yeah. I have not <laughs> noticed that, none that you mentioned. Okay. <laughs> so what do you mean? Is it an actual mm. helmet? It's an it? actual helmet. So what happens is your skull needs to have a, a specific shape, right? Mm-hmm. But let's say baby is has torticollis or doesn't move the head to the right. So then all of a sudden, they're, as they're developing, they start to develop a flat head. Mm-hmm. So it'll be oh. flat on one side. So and the it's literally to shape and mm-hmm. it's a nice. Yeah. So nice they'll wear it depending, you know, depending on how severe the case is. Uh, so <laughs> they'll, blowing my yeah, mind right they'll now. wear it for a couple hours a day, sometimes longer. You know, obviously there are situations where they need to have it for other reasons and interventions. Um, but we've had cases in the um, office where we've been able to avoid kids having to put helmets on just by adjusting the spine. And allowing their necks. Are you able to see it? Yeah. yeah. To see it. Yeah. Actually, they make it's them It's like cute. legit helmets. Like, yeah. It is. Like it's a, a helmet. Yeah. Different... Mm-hmm. And they'll wow. paint them and they'll make it. Yeah. They'll put their names There's on it. There's a whole section in Amazon about baby helmet decals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> blow my mind. Okay. Well, I, I get that. So not, again, it's, <laughs> it's wow. just another way that we are addressing the symptoms and not getting to the cause Mm -hmm. so we could like for example we've had great success also in able to prevent having to use the the -hmm. the helmet Mm -hmm. just by reshaping teaching um you know parents on how to move on on how to yeah i mean we'll yeah we'll adjust the spine and then we'll teach the parents hey this is how you know these are the exercises you should be doing at home Mm -hmm. play these games Mm -hmm. you know Put your baby on their tummy. If they're not crawling, play some sort of army game, crawling game with them. So it's things that you, you know, that sometimes um, you think are limited, but it's really not. There are so many other options out there. Um, and yeah, I know and I, I feel like we we went the other way with the helmet talk. Yeah, now. But <laughs> got, bottom so. line, I think, is movement. I movement, yes. There needs to be movement in the spine. There needs to be yeah. movement in the spinal cord. There needs to be movement in the nervous system. Yeah. So the way I described this once, and I don't know if it's correct, is that the best analogy that I can think about, you know, everything you just said in terms of yeah. chiropractic care, is that whenever your body is not acting right, you get different sensations and pain. It's kind of like when you have, like, the check engine light come on on your car. You're like, yes. something's wrong. Mm-hmm. There's our body's way of saying something's not right. The same way is that whenever you have your spine is basically like the transmission of a car. Mm-hmm. The body won't go, won't move, yeah. won't act properly. It's kind of like the car won't move if the transmission is busted. Mm-hmm. Everybody's in fear and dying to have back pain or the, my back's out or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then you your body shuts down in a way like you can't move. You got to stay in your bed, blah, blah, blah. Yep. Same thing mm-hmm. with a car. Like you can sort of start a car if you have a bad starter or other things mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. But if your transmission's gone, you, you're dead. You ain't yeah. going nowhere. Your yeah. car's not moving. So does that kind of... Absolutely. Good yeah. Very good. Nailed it. Uh, That's a really good yeah, one. Yeah. And I would say the and transmission is your brain. Mm -hmm. And then the wires are the nerves that are Mm -hmm. coming out of your spine. Mm -hmm. So and then those those, you know, those wires, they literally go to every single thing in the car. Mm -hmm. Same thing. The nerves are literally going to every cell, tissue, organ in the body. So then those wires, you literally could cut them off. You know, your arm might still work. People have like reconstructive surgery all the time. Mm -hmm. But if the transmission's done, the spinal cord and the the transmission, you're done. You're done. Yeah. 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 So yeah. To, yeah. For those of you that feel that, that we might be going way over the top, I just brought it down a little bit for you. Yeah. To make it, but the you car know. analogy is a really good one because the car always gives you warnings. Yes. Right. Yeah. You can. I mean, you know, yesterday I went to start my car and it did something funny. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And it's Thanks funny because you can yeah. with the car. I like this because you could also. You know, the same way that you, for the body, you use Advil, you can put a Band-Aid, you can compress, yeah. compress. The same thing with the car, you know, you can change the water, you can do all these things to yeah, try to it's like... it's the oil, not the water. Well, sometimes you have to add water, water, don't you? But you don't change the water, do you? But you have to add water. You have to Obviously, drain I don't know. Okay, so I don't know cars. Mechanic. I don't know cars. No. <laughs> it might be why your car is acting up. It might. <laughs> just it might yeah, be. Yeah, no comment about it that. might be gas. <laughs> She borrowed no. my car for a little bit, and the moment I got it back... I'm never going to hear the end of this. No. 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 It did not break with me. No. Let's get that in. the next person yeah. who wrote it. I, yeah. I love this interaction. Yeah. Like, it's almost the same way that when we go to you guys' office, and it's just this it, back and forth of who does the most amount of work, who kind of knows what's going on. 
I know who does the most amount of work, and I've established that. I've broken down your office systematically <laughs> on my own. You have a chart. I have a chart, and I didn't even. I just literally told you, I'm like, this is how things work, right? That's what I figured. That's exactly but, it. <laughs> you know. But it. We'll, we'll we'll get to your practice in a second. You know. So what I, the last little thing I want to talk about self care mm-hmm. with two things really, is. I am super amazed. Uh, a lot of things amaze me with regards to chiropractic, <laughs> but it's more of your ability to know exactly where where something is off. Mm-hmm. Like the little simples of how you raise the leg, kind of like little swipes, you know, in mm-hmm. different areas. You're like, ah, yeah. here. You're mm-hmm. like, what? The f- how? <laughs> like, what are the things that you guys look for? Uh, again, I'm I'm not asking you to give an entire chiropractic, uh-huh. yeah. you know, <laughs> degree class here. But what are the little things that you guys look for when you do like a little swipe or you lift the leg? Mm-hmm. Like, what is that? Mm-hmm. So different techniques will use different analysis. Mm-hmm. But the bottom line is we're using palpation. So we're feeling we, you know, we train a lot through school to feel what normal feels like mm-hmm. and when it's malpositioned. So okay. then we also we can tell, OK, is there edema or swelling under that joint? Mm-hmm. So these are things that you're probably not even noticing we're looking for or feeling when we're touching or we're swiping. But then when you're turning your head side to side, we're checking okay how how are the muscles working Mm -hmm. can you turn your head side to side or do you need to use your shoulder to turn side to side Mm -hmm. so little things that you're not on a data super sneaky (laughs) and then we do the same when we lift your legs up can you just bend your knee or do you need to lift your whole hip off Mm -hmm. the table just to Mm -hmm. bend the knee but the main thing we we look for in our in our technique is yeah. reflexes deep tendon reflexes so yeah. just like when you get your exam done you know your physicals done they do the little hammer on mm-hmm. your knee to see your reflex we're looking for the exact same response um because that with the reflexes we're looking for you got an input and you need an output if that makes yeah. sense so mm-hmm. The, the body is getting an input and it the nervous system needs to be able to read that something hit the knee and it needs to have a output. And yeah. so that's kind mm-hmm. of what we are. And that's like a, a simple way to explain it. But that's what we're looking for is if I press here, does the body know that I just pressed there? And what is it mm-hmm. going to tell me? Gotcha. Yeah. In a sense, obviously, there's been. A lot of training to be able to, you know, use our hands yeah. to feel like in chiropractic school. I think the first quarter you're in there. You're already learning how to touch and use your mm-hmm. hands, you know, um, but that is what we're looking for. And there's over 14, I think, um, different ways to, to check for subluxation, which is just okay. a big word for the bones out of alignment, putting pressure on that nerve, cutting off nerve interference. Mm-hmm. So, um yeah. But yeah, with our technique, the deep tendon reflex is a really big one because not only do we need to have the a, an input or, you know, a response back, just like when you touch a hot stove, the same idea, right? There needs to be a message sent to the brain back down to the through the spinal cord. Um, but it can't be overstimulated. It can't be absent and it can't be too much. It needs to be the right amount of response. The body is like it's a yeah. perfect machine. It is. And it's and so some, many some, moving some parts. Some are more perfect than Yeah, others. like mine. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> so, we're going with this. so I I want to talk to you a little bit about your practice just because I think there's, there's a lot of things that I really like the way you guys do. And I think I told you that multiple times. But there's two things that I think are super beyond superb that I've never seen anywhere else. Your app. Mm-hmm. And you have created a system that you have virtually eliminated wait time that blows my mind (laughs) the fact that you can go to a doctor's office and literally before i think i've sat down literally in your office like twice and it's to talk not even (laughs) because i'm waiting for my turn it's like go 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 and you also have your your app basically gives you like the ability to change without mm-hmm. you necessarily having to, oh, you have to call us to do this. Or mm-hmm. Like it's like in the app, you need to change the yeah. appointment. If something happens, you do it and you guys can see it on the other side. That blows my mind. And you yeah. still give <laughs> excellent care because I think you guys obviously were very happy with the care that you mm-hmm. give to me, my wife, my kids and everything. But it's more like the experience. Like it doesn't feel like, oh, I have to go there. It's like, I get to go there. <laughs> yeah. You know Yay. what I mean? That's like, awesome. It feels I'm like happy. you get to go there. So, how did you guys? I know you said you've mentioned that you have a mentor and they kind of mm-hmm. explained to you the system, but how are you able to maintain that? 
We're very, very intentional about it. Mm -hmm. um, we make sure, one, yes, we train a lot on our systems and procedures. We, Our main goal is service, is serving our patients. Mm -hmm. So it's not about us. It's about the moment somebody walks in the door, we want to make sure that, one, we don't that they we don't match their um, their emotion. Yeah, or their energy bring level. Their energy. Mm -hmm. We bring it up. So yeah. if you're coming in and you had a bad day, we're not going to match you where you're at. We want to make sure that we bring you up in a mm -hmm. sense. So and that is if you're coming and you just drove. We're in Atlanta, and if you just drove 30 yeah. minutes to get to us, the last thing we want is for you to wait another 30 minutes to see <laughs> us. So we're very intentional about that. That yeah. if somebody comes in. Um, we make sure that they're not waiting very long. And so I think that it has just created, I don't mm -hmm. know, a sense of urgency without the practice member knowing that it's an urgent matter. Yeah. yeah. But I think it doesn't, what's, what's again, mind boggling is the fact that you do that. But at the same time, it doesn't feel like you're cutting corners on the surface. Yeah. Like, I, like you, you bring people back really fast for the adjustment, but it's, I don't feel like you're rushing through we, mm -hmm. the adjustment. It's like... It's like, what's and, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? and it's, I think it's excellent. I think it's on little things like that. Like we didn't create the app. Mm -hmm. Right. But it was another chiropractor, yeah. a mentor of ours who saw the need, created it and then shared it with us. Right. So if we're able to be efficient on the checking in, you know, so you don't have to sign in when you come in. It's something that if we eliminate some of these things, mm -hmm. then when we are one to one, I can give mm -hmm. you all of my attention. Right. So yeah. if I don't have to worry about, oh, my gosh, I have to write this down on his chart mm -hmm. because I have a system that allows me to do it. Then I know that I can focus though that energy in those 10 seconds mm -hmm. on you and your family. And that that's what makes the yeah. difference. So we've I think. eliminated. Yeah. And even it's funny because even I think the beginning of last year, I don't know if you noticed, but we moved the check in station from where the door the beginning of the door yeah, to the back yeah, of the the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because it was creating bottlenecks so people would come in and they were, it would create like a weird line if everybody had yeah. their right at the door kind of like yeah. outside yeah. Yes. people so were coming we're like, in and out okay yeah. we got to solve that problem so we moved it to the other side so mm -hmm. we're continually eliminating ways that are creating bottleneck mm -hmm. yeah. so that whenever the pa the practice member is there our focus, especially the docs, and then we also train our staff to do everything else except mm -hmm. adjust. So that way, for example, if you need to go in and change your appointment, you're dealing with the staff and not us, because then when you are with us, you're with us about yeah. your care. If they can do everything else, they're gonna do everything else. Mm -hmm. So that's why we delegate to them yeah. and train them. Because they're, uh, and we tell the the team this all the time, we we actually train probably two to three hours a week on a regular basis. Now we've had the holidays, so we've been on and off. But so we'll train and then we'll have our team meetings either Monday during lunch or first thing Tuesday. So the office only opens at three. Mm -hmm. The doctor's meeting starts at 12. So that means that we are usually there anywhere from 10 o'clock on so we can prep for it. And the team needs to bring us problems that they are seeing that for us to fix because they'll see things that we're not seeing because on all basis. on a weekly basis. We're, 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 yeah. yeah, we're creating that where I, I I can't take credit for it. I listened to it in the another podcast, Craig Rochelle podcast, yeah. but he said uh, that everybody <laughs> <laughs> he said everyone should be looking to be chief problem solvers, mm -hmm. you know, CPS like in their company. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was like, if you want to be valued in the company, then you need to be solving problems. The bigger the, the problems you're solving, the bigger your value is. Mm -hmm. So the bigger your salary should be and whatnot, yeah. whatever comes with more value. And so we've instilled that in them that you guys need to be looking for problems to solve because there's always going to be bottlenecks. Always. There's yeah. always going to be something going on that needs to be better. Or and could so be better. yesterday we're doing our giveaway, right? Every year we do throughout the year we do different things so we're, we have the raffle going so we had a quick meeting yesterday and we talked about okay what what can we do how can we improve this and it was as simple as they said we need to have the scorecards instead of on that table right here by the computer so they can easily reach right mm -hmm. so it doesn't they don't <laughs> need to the reach i got it <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So little things like that, we're able to, yeah, 
<laughs> Shameless plug. Oh, so we're able to put in um, to put in all of that responsibility on the team, and we tell them their goal is to keep the, the doctors doing what only the doctors can do, which is adjusting. Mm-hmm the practice members and loving on them. They they also need to solve problems, they need to connect, but that at the end of the day they can't adjust. So if we sure. empower them with all of that, then it allows us to have a, a deeper relationship with every single practice member, every single person that comes in, even to the point where we tell them to be aware if somebody is off their game on that day because they might be going through something that they don't want to share with anybody, but we're going to get it out of them because they might need prayer. You know, they mm-hmm. might just need a couple seconds of, hey, I just need to just vent to somebody who has no idea who I'm talking about mm-hmm. or what the situation is, but they just need to let it out. So we empower and we train the team on on these aspects. Awareness. Yeah. On that awareness. Yeah. I think you guys are doing a great job. Thank so, you. Thank very you. Much that means a I lot. I appreciate it. Yeah. Because we also have a lot of respect for you. We do. That's we do. We're I was like, gonna say we're would, out of time, but yeah. you know what? what we can make this a two do? episode. <laughs> we can make this a two episode podcast. So, um, although I really hate to finish on this topic, but you know, we're out of time. <laughs> but I do want to to leave us with one little tidbit on self care, something that people can do at home. Obviously, aside from getting you know adjusted on a regular mm-hmm. basis and everything, what can people do at home? It. I don't want to. Think about something unique. Don't be like, oh, yeah. eat better, extra. Like, mm-hmm. what can they do to be like, hey, take a moment every day or every week to do this to start of the year right? Me, I would say breathing exercises. Okay. Mm-hmm. Google proper breathing exercises uh, because that's a good start. That's a it's a specific one. And it's something that we do on a regular basis. But most of us are doing it wrong. So <laughs> that sounds weird. But you're yes. Right. <laughs> so, you know, we do it to survive, but we're probably not doing it right. And it'll take work. It'll take practice. But it's simple. You don't need special equipment. You yeah. can do it in the shower. You can do it in the car. You can do it at home. So that's a really good one. Breathing exercises. And it's really just practice. Uh, put your hand on your chest, hand on your ab. You want to breathe to this hand needs to be lifted up last. So the, the you need to fill your chest first, um, lungs later. So that's really, and yeah. I, 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 was, mm-hmm. I know we're running out of time, but I okay. love telling uh, my practice members to always remember that to go outside, just go mm-hmm. outside. If things are stressful, we were created to be outside, breathing fresh air, looking up at the trees, hunting, gathering, walking outside. So yeah. whenever they're <laughs> stressed, whenever they're hurting, I always say, Take off your shoes and just go walk on the grass and get grounded. I know it sounds super witchcrafty and voodoo, is but that's what we were <laughs> created to do. Things. Yeah, <laughs> and I and you know I always say this as well. Our spine was supposed to be in an open, uh, you know, um, I don't know how to des- describe that in the podcast, but we're supposed to be open. But the more that we go throughout the day, the more we're closing in. Yeah, the more we're hunching in. in. So go outside and look up at the sky and get grounded. That's what I think. Do that every day. It'll absolutely change your life. It will. I love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you for having us. No, I think it yes. was very interesting. A good way to start the year. I hate the fact that we did not get to my favorite subject, which is why coconut is such an important, you know, <laughs> element um, for people from Brazil. I have yes. I have data to back this to up. <laughs> you know, my brother-in-law is married to someone from Brazil and she loves coconut, too. And we've talked about this. We, yeah. I think this should be a separate subject. Yeah, I think so, too. Like, start a thread on the YouTube page. <laughs> Let's start that thread going. Yeah, why do we love coconut so much? It's a mystery, but I have data to prove that it is true. It's we put it on funny. everything. We literally. do put it on everything. When well, I put too. it literally on our bodies, my hair. I do. There you go. Yeah. See, that's my point. <laughs> I, I, it's facts and data. <laughs> it's facts and data. But um, yeah, thank you so much, guys, for listening to uh, our episode today. We're going to mm-hmm. link your page to the description of this video. So if you guys want to reach out to the doctors here, uh, I, you know, like I said, we're practice members and we're very happy. Um, I think, you know, regardless of what you're looking for, it's a good way to start the year to doing some of these techniques that you guys talked about and making sure that you get, you know, your body running right. And I think you guys are really good at doing that. So 
be sure to reach out to them if you guys have any questions. And like always, we're always here to help. Hopefully this is the first of many things that we're going to do with regards to self-care and improvement and learning over the years. So it's not just going to be random topics that we come up with. But as always, if you have a topic that we you want us to talk about during a podcast, feel free to send us a message or write us a comment and we'll be happy to address it. So thank you guys so much again thank for you. coming and thank you guys for listening. Have a good one. Thanks. <laughs>